Good morning, West Bowles Community Church. My name is Kevin Krause, and I'm one of the elders here at West Bowles. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been continually amazed each and every week at the number of people who have joined us in this online format. But we look forward to getting back together. And if you've only recently become aware of West Bowles through our online services, we hope at that time that you'll consider joining us in person and perhaps making West Bowles your full-time church home. Before we turn it over to the worship team, I'd like to open in a word of prayer. Please join me. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to get together, to worship, and to hear your word. We pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will be pleasing in your sight. Thank you and enjoy the service. This next song, um, one of the ones I chose is called Grace Alone. Why I love this song is because I think it centers us around the gospel and it recalibrates us on the fact that we, are, we were orphans once and we were lost. And by the grace of Christ, we have been saved. And it is unapologetic in that salvation. Um, it is unapologetic in the fact that we, um, we can admit that we are fallen. We can admit that we are sinful. And it's not weakness to admit that. Because um, when we are made weak, he is made strong. And so this for me, I, I worship real hard to this song. I really love this song. And I hope you guys love this song too. Father, you work your will. And I had no righteousness of my own. I had no right to draw near your throne. Father, you love me still. And in love before you lay the world's foundation, you breathe death into what I me as your own. You have raised me up so high above my station. I'm a child of God by grace, grace alone. Your face was set. And I 
Good morning, West Bowles. Welcome to our service and thank you for joining us today. My name is Charity Kettle. I'm one of the directors of Children's Ministries here at West Bowles, and we have a few short announcements to make you aware of today. Just a quick reminder that our June Donate Item of the Month is virtual VBS sponsorships. Now, typically we would be asking for lots of volunteers for VBS, but since we're going virtual this year, we are asking for your donations so that we can bring VBS into as many homes as possible. We need only $10 per child to cover the cost of supplies. Thank you in advance for your generous support and for helping us get VBS into as many homes as possible. Next, I wanted to let you know that registration for our Upward Sports Soccer League is now open. Our program starts the week of August 4th with practices available Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Thursday evenings with games on Saturdays. This is an awesome Christ-based sports program that is for boys and girls ages kindergarten through eighth grade. We also have a need for coaches and referees too. So jump online to volunteer or to register your child at westbowls.com slash upward sports. Finally, we wanna let you know that the staff and elders are tentatively planning to have church services here at West Bowls on July 12th. I wish I could give you more details, but due to ever-changing county and state mandates, we'll be emailing you specifics of the services that same week. We are so excited to get together again, even if it looks a little bit different from what we're all used to. Watch for an email explaining how we're gonna get together and still be safe and healthy. That's it for the announcements this week. West Bowls, we love you guys and so appreciate how faithful you've been through these past three months. You are awesome. Enjoy the rest of the service. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the
seal the promise your buried body began to breathe and out of silence the roaring lion declared the brave had no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body Good morning, West Bowles Community Church. My name is David Perez. I'm the youth director here at the church, uh, and I'm so excited to be able to share a message with you uh, that God has put on my heart uh, this morning. And so uh, before we get started, let's just pray, and then we'll hop into it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for this day and this time. Thank you for the opportunity to be able uh, to gather digitally, Lord God, and uh, learn more about you and dig into your scripture. Uh, Lord, I pray this morning that you speak through me, that it may not be my words, but yours. I uh, pray that you open hearts and ears. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, church, uh, this morning, uh, as you're sitting at home, here's what I want you to do. Uh, I want you to think through some of the differences between yourself and those sitting next to you or your immediate family. Um, so just think through some of the things that make you unique, that make you different from those around you. And uh, while you do that, I'm actually going to read a list of some of the differences uh, between myself and the rest of the staff, all right? So um, let's start off here. John, okay? John, John is tall and I am short. Uh, Nathan, his favorite basketball team uh, has won three championships in all time, uh, while mine has won, I think, 18. Just a few more, just a few more. Uh, Ryan. Uh, he is short and I'm tall. Melanie, she's an accounting whiz and I can barely count. Uh, if you've got some of the kids in the youth group sitting with you, just ask them how many times they've had to jump on, off, on, uh, or off and on again the bus because I've miscounted and I'm sitting here thinking we've lost two kids when in actuality we've only lost one. Totally kidding. We've never lost a kid on a youth trip, all right? Uh, Kayla. She's very organized and I'm, well, not as organized. We'll, we'll put it that way. Uh, Char, she is very thoughtful and I am very, very forgetful. Uh, Charity, uh, she's got this stylish pink streak in her hair while I can barely brush my hair. I'm sure some of you are looking at me going, man, he needs a haircut. And to answer your question, yes, I have not had a haircut since quarantine began, all right? Um, Dave, Dave has acquired so much wisdom while I have so much more to acquire. Um, and Jeff, Jeff is handy with the drill and I'm the cause for him needing to use his drill around here, all right? Um, no, no, those are some of, 
some of the differences uh, here in the staff, but really we do have a staff that is quite diverse. I mean, we've got introverts and extroverts. We've got people in between. Uh, we've got people who are Enneagram type two and type six and seven, and somehow, some way, someone who's a type 22. I don't know how it works, don't ask me, but it, it does, all right? Um, we've got staff members with young kids, staff members with no kids, staff members with kids who are grown up and out of the house. Uh, we've got staff members who grew up using line, landlines and others who don't even know what a landline is. Me. Uh, totally kidding. But uh, no, we, we do have a diverse staff. And I could keep going on and on and on um, about the differences uh, in the staff. And I'm sure as you've sat there and thought about the things that make you unique uh, and the things that differentiate you from your immediate family, um, I'm sure you've come up with quite a list. And, and that's just the people around you. Now, just think about uh, your coworkers. Think about your friends. Think about your extended family. Think about your neighbors. I'm sure as you think about them, you could come up with more things that make them different, that make you different. Some of the unique qualities about both of you. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. You see, we were all fearfully and wonderfully made. That's how God created us. He created us to be unique. In fact, that's, that's how we're called to function as a body, as, as a church. Uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, go ahead and, and pick it up, and we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 22. It says this, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church. Now, Paul's talking about Christ when he says him. Uh, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every Way. I want to key in on one part of that verse. It says, which is his body. You see here, Paul is talking about the church being the body of Christ. And this is not the first time that Paul uses that metaphor to describe the church. He talks about it several times in scripture. And what he's saying by that is we have these churches, right? Individual churches that are made up of individual people with unique giftings and talents, preferences, thoughts, feelings, hopes, dreams, and all these unique people make up a church. And that's a beautiful thing. It's great that we have so many different people, that we have diversity in the church. Because that allows us to do more as a church. It allows us to reach different people. It allows us to share the gospel with different people in different ways. And so we get all these individuals that make up one church. But it doesn't stop there. See, Paul's also talking about how then you have a bunch of different churches that all make up the entirety of the body of Christ. And each church has its unique giftings, talents, people, uh, experiences. I mean, just look at Littleton. Here we are right here. We've got West Bowles. We've got Mosaic just down the street. We've got Waterstone right behind us, Foothills. And each and every single one of us, each church is unique, brings its own uh, experiences and flavor and, and giftings and talents to the body of Christ. You know, as, as I thought about this and as I thought about West Bowles, I realized just even, even in our congregation, just think of all the different people we have. I mean, we've got people who are talented at singing, people who are talented at acting, people who um, are newborns all the way up to people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, and every age in between. We've got people who prefer a choir, people who prefer uh, contemporary worship music. We've got people who love to serve and give of their time, people who love to build things. We've got people who are gifted in, in leadership, in teaching, people who are gifted in, in hospitality. We've got introverts, extroverts. We've got people who are passionate uh, for missions across the globe, people who are passionate about missions right here. I mean, we've got so many different, again, giftings and talents. We've got so many preferences and thoughts and feelings. We've got people across the political spectrum, some who lean left, some who lean right. And it is so awesome to have such a diverse community here at the church. Uh, I know that God has used each and every single one of us and what's unique about us, our upbringings, our culture, our background, to reach people 
that otherwise would not be reached, to share the gospel with those that might not otherwise hear it. And that's such a wonderful thing. We see that's how the body is supposed to be, unique. Now, while it's a good thing, that can become a detrimental thing. It can become a bad thing when we place our own preferences, our own thoughts, our own feelings, our own giftings and talents above how we are supposed to operate and above what we're called to collectively as a body. And Paul tells us that here in Ephesians. So um, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to pick it up in verse 1. It says this, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. You see, Paul's focus there in that passage is unity. What he's saying is that above Our diversity, above the things that make us unique, above the things that make us different from each other, above our individual giftings and talents and preferences and thoughts, needs to be our unity under Christ. Let me say that again. Above our diversity is our unity under Christ. And not only is that something Paul's discussing in this chapter, but it's actually a major theme we see through the entire book of Ephesians. Now, just to give you a little context, Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus. And and early on in the early church, um, we see two distinct groups form. We have the Jewish Christians, those who have had and known God for centuries, who have a rich, deep tradition and history of knowing God and, and who have now come to see the Messiah and realize that He is Lord. And so we have that half of the church, and then we have the other half, which is everyone else, the Gentiles, and that's whom Paul is is speaking to. And so early on in the church's development, we see a lot of splits and divisions and fights amongst these two groups, amongst who should have priority and, and, and who should we listen to and what teachings are right and wrong. And so there's basically just this big argument between half the church and the other half of the church. And what Paul's getting at in the book of Ephesians, he's saying, look, there's no longer that division. You shouldn't identify as, as a Jewish Christian or you shouldn't identify as, as a Gentile Christian. No, no, no. We're all one body under one God. We're all Christians. We're all Christ followers. In other words, our, our unity as a body is more important than those things that differentiate us. It's more important than the diversity and the things that make us unique. And that was a very important message back then, in that day and age when they had that major disagreement. And I think it's an especially important message today in our day and age. And that's because we live in a culture that values individuality and what I think, my preferences, what I want above everything else. That is what our culture, that is what our society really does believe and think. I mean, think about it. When we look around us, that's what we see a lot of. We see a lot of, well, what's important to me? What matters to me? What what do I think? What do I feel? And the individuality that do what you want to do is placed above everything else. And um, I think one of the things that has furthered that, that's that's made even a greater divide in our culture is social media. And we look at social media and, and it really has become divisive and polarizing and you see it everywhere. Uh, now one of the things that social media tends to do is it tends to, to make us think that everyone either thinks the way I think and feels the way I feel or that they should think or feel or believe the way I believe. And if anyone else thinks otherwise, well, they're wrong and I'm not listening to them. 
And so just like there was a divide back then, I think in our own culture and society, there's a divide today. I can't tell you how many times I've seen on social media as of recent, someone post something like this. Uh, this is how I feel or what I think. And if you think or feel differently in any way, then go ahead and unfriend me or don't talk to me. It's amazing how often I've seen that. It's dumbfounding. And the reason that we're like this is it's part of our sin nature. It's part of our flesh. And we can go all the way back to the fall. Now that's part of that, that selfish desire that I, what I think is the most important thing. That's part of this nature. And I wish I could say that as a body of believers, as a big church, not just West Bowles, I'm talking the church as a whole, I wish I could say that we're entirely different and that we do not run across that, but that's not true. You see, we, we're just as guilty of that. We, we do the same things. I, uh, I ran across an article, and I wanted to share some of the, the things I found um, that, that talked about, there's this pastor who, who on Twitter, he asked people to tweet some of the uh, craziest church arguments and fights that they've run across. Um, and even some fights that, that cause some division in churches. So uh, I found some, and I want to share them with you. Now, as, as I read these, some of them were kind of funny. Um, and the reason they were funny is because we had people who were leaving churches or splitting or, or just completely going, this is wrong, uh, over small, small issues. Uh, they were making mountains out of molehills. So I want to read a few of these to you. So one says this, Uh, There was an argument over the appropriate length of the worship pastor's beard. Interesting. Let's see, here's the next one. Um, There was a big church argument over the discovery that the church budget was off 10 cents. 10 cents. Someone finally gave a dime to settle the issue. Uh, A dispute in the church because the Lord's Supper had crayon grape juice instead of grape juice. I assure you guys, we just use grape juice, okay? Uh, Two different churches reported fights over the type of coffee. In one of the churches, they moved from Folgers to a stronger Starbucks brand. In the other church, they simply moved to a stronger blend. Members left the church in the latter example over coffee. Some church members left the church because one church member hid the vacuum cleaner from them. It resulted in a major fight and split over a vacuum cleaner. Now, those are some silly examples. Crazy. But they're true. You see, that goes to show that as as a body, sometimes we're, we're the same as what's happening out there in society and culture. Sometimes as a body, we tend to place our individual preferences, wants, desires, giftings, talents above the unity of the church, above being united, above the spirit of peace that Paul calls us to. Now, I want to clarify something. Notice how in the scripture Paul doesn't say conformity. Everyone be conformed. No. You see, to be in unity... We do not have to be in conformity. We do not all have to be the same, think the same, feel the same, behave the same, or have the same giftings and talents. In fact, that runs contrary to what Scripture tells us. We're not called to be identical. No. We are called to be diverse. We are called to use our individual uh, things that make us unique, our individual giftings and talents to further His kingdom, but we're called to do so united in unity. And so in in a culture that elevates individuality, that elevates individual preferences, how, how do we be in unity? How do we be unified while still being diverse and different? Well, Paul tells us right there in Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to pick it up in verse 2. He says this, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. In other words, what Paul's telling us to do is to be unified. Well, we need to be patient and gentle with one another. And oftentimes that entails listening. 
That entails letting other people speak and hearing them out. Genuinely hearing them and listening, not just waiting for them to say something so that we can then say something back. He talks about bearing with one another in love. That means being gracious towards each other. That means giving each other permission to make mistakes, to get things wrong, but being able to walk alongside each other in that. That means walking alongside each other during the bad times and the good times. That's what bearing with one another in love looks like. And this is, this is the most important one here. He says this, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There's one body and one Spirit. You see, church, we see that we can't do any of that. We can't be humble and gentle with each other. We can't be patient with one another. We can't bear with one another in love without His Spirit. Unless He leads We're not able to do any of that. And so that's how we keep unity while still being diverse, while still keeping uh, the things that make us unique, and while still being able to use our giftings and talents. And here's the beautiful thing about this. When this works well, when, when we step into that and remember that we're called to be unified, we sharpen each other. We make each other better. Uh, I have a friend, his name's Nick Everett. Uh, some of you know him. Uh, Nick used to be a youth leader here in the church. Don't worry, I'm not saying used to because something bad happened. Uh, no, Nick uh, was a seminary student here, was a youth leader here, um, and he ended up getting a job uh, out in Ohio uh, to be a youth pastor out there. And so that's, that's why they moved. But um, I always cherished Nick and I's friendship. And here's why. Nick and I were pretty different. Um, especially when it came to certain theological things, um, certain things when it came to Scripture. Him and I had some, some very different beliefs, um, and I, but I always look forward to talking with Nick and sharing what I thought, letting him share what he thought, and, and quite honestly, um, not arguing, but, but having spirited discussions over what we thought. I'll never forget the last California trip uh, we took together uh, with the youth group. I remember because he was my co-pilot, and when we drive, we always have to have a co-pilot, and, uh, and Nick was mine, and so for four hours, uh, we talked theology, opinions, beliefs, political leanings, and again, we were quite opposite in a lot of those, in many of those things. But above that, above what each of us thought individually, what Nick and I always kept at the forefront of our conversations above everything else was the fact that we were brothers in Christ. It was the fact that we were united under Jesus and the love that we had for each other. And so I always look forward to this because quite honestly, Nick helped sharpen my faith. He grew me uh, and God used him to grow my faith uh, in ways that might not have happened otherwise. He challenged what I thought my opinions, my preferences, even some of my beliefs. And he changed. He helped change me. And you see, that's what happens when we as a body are able to engage in conversations with people who believe differently, who think differently, who feel differently, remembering to keep the unity, we end up growing. We end up becoming better Christians, better Christ followers. We challenge each other. We sharpen each other. That's what the scripture says, as iron sharpens iron. And so I loved, I loved those conversations with Nick because that's what happened. And inevitably, church, you are going to run across people in this body and in the body out there whom you don't see eye to eye with. Maybe it's a political leaning. Maybe it's the style of worship. Maybe, maybe it's something scriptural. Maybe it's how a gift or a talent should be used. Maybe it's a sermon or a message. We're going to come across others in the church whom we don't agree with, whom we, whom we don't see eye to eye with. And that's okay. We're called to diversity. We're called to be different and unique. But what I would challenge you to do is instead of Instead of splitting, 
instead of saying, you know what, no, I don't agree with you and you're wrong and that's it, I'm done. I want to challenge you to what Paul calls us to. That's keeping unity and the spirit of peace. I want to challenge you to, to be gentle and kind with one another, to be patient with one another, to bear with one another in love. I want to challenge you to ask the Spirit to guide you in those things, to help you with those things. And here's what I think will happen. When we, when we above our diversity, value our unity under Christ, we see the body working the way it should, even when we don't agree with one another, even when we don't see eye to eye we begin to see God grow us and stretch us, pull us out of our comfort zones, and change us in ways we never thought imaginable. So West Bowles, my hope, my prayer, is that as a body, we go out there and we be unique. We be diverse. We be who God has created us to be. We use our differences to the advantage of the kingdom our individuality, who God created us to be, to spread the gospel. But I pray that we do so in unity under Christ, that we remember that we are in this together, not just West Bowles, but all the churches, the entirety of the body of Christ, that we remember that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ and that the body be who she is called to be. So remember, above our diversity is our unity under Christ. Let's remember that. Above our diversity is our unity under Christ. West Bulls, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us this morning. Then we've got one more song at the end for us to be able to worship together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day and this time. Thank you for, again, the opportunity for us to gather uh, digitally, Lord. Even though we're not able to gather together, that we're able to um, still gather as a body, Lord. Uh, Jesus, I just pray that we uh, continue to use our individual giftings, talents, uh, our individual and unique upbringings and experiences and backgrounds, Lord God, for your glory. Uh, Lord, thank you that you created us each unique, each fearfully and wonderfully made, Lord. And I pray that we continue to use that uh, to advance your kingdom, to spread the gospel, Lord. I pray that uh, we as a, as a collective body here at West Bowles um, are able to do that, Lord God, as a part of the larger body of Christ. And Lord, as we do that, I just pray that we, remem we remember that we are to be united in unity under you, Jesus, that we are all one body, that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that we're able to be patient, kind, humble, and bear with one another in love, Lord. Thank you so much for what you've already done through this church, Lord. And I, I'm so excited to see what you're going to continue to do through us, uh, Lord, during this time. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. West Bowles, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we hope you have a great week. Christ alone, Corn.
Thanks for joining us this morning. We miss you, and we hope you have a blessed week.